Well, good morning. Good to be back with you again this morning, back on YouTube again. It's been several weeks now since we've had a YouTube sermon, and I'm glad to be able to be back with you again. Uh, this morning we're doing a YouTube. We're working towards making that transition into the Facebook Live or to our live recording. Uh, we're just doing this to kind of still double up for a while. Uh, prayerfully, we'll get to the point where we're able to do the live recordings. I know that, that seems to be much better. Uh, to be able to view it live rather than to have it recorded. But this morning, we're still going to be back to the recording. If you uh, enjoy it, you can leave a comment to it or send us an email telling us how much you enjoyed having uh, YouTube back again. Uh, if not, then join with us. Uh, we'll be trying to move towards Facebook Live. I can't make any guarantees on that yet, but uh, uh, we are trying to move in that direction uh, slowly. But anyways, I welcome you. It's good to be back again. It's always good to be back. I had a great time as my family and I traveled to Mexico. Uh, we had unlimited beach, unlimited food, uh, limited sun as a couple of days it did rain. Um, but it, overall, we had a fantastic uh, time uh, on the Caribbean coast, of, uh, a little bit south of uh, Cancun at an all-inclusive resort for five days with my family and as well friends. And so I want to thank Ryan for doing such a great job of filling in while I was gone, uh, not only in the message, uh, but also caring for John and Alicia at the time of their house fire and uh, stepping in for that. He did a great job with that as well. Uh, things are getting back to order on their part. It won't be a while. It'll still be a while before it's all completed, but at least for John and Alicia, things are beginning to get back to order as uh, they're getting settled in a little bit, not in the house, but in other, in other uh, accommodations, other living arrangements, and until their house is able to be repaired. And now the, the, the hard work will begin of uh, repairing it and doing the work that needs to be done there. Uh, as I come back this week, I want to take the message this morning to take a time to transition from our Christmas series on hope, uh, Hope for Christmas, to our New Year series that I've entitled A New Year Blessing as we will look at the blessings of God in the scriptures, uh, where the scriptures talk about blessed are or blessed is, uh, we'll be looking at those beginning the new year, seeking the blessing of God for our new years. A new year blessing is a series that we're going to look at. And so this morning, I'm going to transition kind of from the Christmas theme. I'm still kind of a little Christmassy. We still got the trees, uh, still got the red sweater. Uh, but we're going to be transitioning from Christmas into the new year, blessings of God. And so this morning, what I want to do is I want to look at Simeon's blessing of Mary and Joseph. And uh, from this blessing, we're going to gain some principles of God's blessing. Um, and as uh, Simeon was the one who was able to hold the promised Messiah in his arms and then bless Mary and Joseph. And so this morning, I've kind of entitled it a post-Christmas blessing as we're going to look at how Jesus' coming brings blessing. Simeon was able to give to Mary and to Joseph, but then we're going to use it as well to transition into what are the blessings that God gives us as we begin to move forward uh, into the new year, seeking God's blessings for us in this new year. Some of us might be a little uh, concerned. Some of us might be a little bit uh, uh, frightened about what could be happening in the year ahead of us. Uh, but we all need to understand that God still is able to bless, can bless, and I believe will bless in the year ahead. So we're all looking forward to that. So we're going to do scripture reading in a moment. If you would want to take your Bible and uh, join with me by turning to Luke chapter 2. We're going to begin at verse 21 and uh, read down through verse 40 as we're going to look at this for the message this morning. So if you have your Bibles available, would you turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Uh, beginning reading at verse 21 and going through the end of the chapter. Join with me as we turn to Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 40 for our scripture reading. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. The name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. And when the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. 
He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The father's child and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, They returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Let's pray, shall we? Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be back again into the pulpit and the proclamation of your message and of the truth of your word. I thank you for the opportunity you give to me each week to present your word unto your people. And I thank you for the fact that each week your spirit has been there to direct me in the preparation and as well in the delivery of the message. And so, Father, I pray again that your spirit would direct the words and the thoughts that I have as I present forth the message this morning unto your people in this recording. Father, I pray your blessing would be upon not only the words and the message that I bring, but upon your people as they receive it that, Father, you might be a blessing unto them. And, Father, we again look forward to this new year and the blessings that you will bestow upon it as well as we look forward to the blessings of a new year. And so, Father, I pray now that your spirit would speak through me, this your servant, speak through me unto your people, the word of God that you would have me to speak as we look forward to this, uh, to your work. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, it is good to be back. It's good to be back in the pulpit. It's good to be back preaching. It's good to be back bringing the word of God again to us. Having just returned from a Mexican resort vacation, having just spent Christmas with my family, having been surprised by Jen and Pete and their family as they drove down from, uh, uh, from Chicago on Christmas night and arrived about 8 o'clock to all of our surprises, and then having Lynette's brother drive down from Wisconsin so that we could have Christmas dinner yesterday together was quite a surprise. And yes, I would even say a blessing. I would have to say that this weekend, this week, and this weekend has been a real blessing unto me. I am blessed by God. Amen? Can you say that as well? Yes, I think that we can all say God has blessed us this Christmas. But as we enter into the new year, some are doing so with great excitement and anticipation for what God's going to do in this new year. Others are entering into it with a bit of fear and trepidation for what might be coming ahead in the new year, for what they anticipate could occur. That's why I want to start the new year by reminding all of us of the blessings that God has given to us. And I want to start by looking this morning at the blessing of Simeon upon Mary and Joseph. 
When I think of the blessings that we receive, I I often start by thinking of financial blessings, how God has richly blessed us financially with with the many things that we own. This is Christmas time. We we just got done opening Christmas gifts and and everything that we've gotten. And often the question is, what'd you get for Christmas? And so we can recognize the gifts that we've been able to give to each other this past weekend and, and the very gift that God has given to us in the homes that we live in and the cars we drive and the rich blessings that we have here in America to be able to celebrate at this Christmas time the gift that God has given us and the rich blessings he's given to us. And so we understand the fact that God has richly blessed us financially. We also can say that God has richly blessed us with our families the families that God has given to us, the time that we've been able to spend together over Christmas, the cherished moments that we have, spending time together with our families and as a family. What a rich blessing that is, especially at this Christmas time. What a blessing family is to many of us and the time that we're able to spend together just accentuates the blessings that we have. There's also the blessing I have of fulfillment. There's a sense in which in America we see our blessing as being able to retire with a full retirement package, a full 401k program that's going to be able to take us on into the ends of uh, of life and then hopefully be something to carry over and and bless those family members that have come after us. And so we do see the blessings and, and we want to see the fulfillment that God has given to us in our lives. And so we want to understand the fact that we have earned this blessing and that we have worked hard and set money aside and been frugal and, and been faithful to, uh, to our long-term goal plans. And as a result of that, uh, we're blessed. Ecclesiastes, however, reminds us that it's vanity to work hard and not be able to enjoy what we've earned. And so we do see what God has blessed us with in our retirement as a real blessing of God. And we're able to enjoy that. But as I look around the earth, there are still people who are not rich that are still blessed. And unfortunately, there are some people without family or whose family is a train wreck and they still consider themselves to have been blessed. And there are many who don't have a 401k to depend on who will go out of this life still blessed. And so we can see that really the blessings of God extend far beyond our financial abilities or our families or even the fulfillment that we have in life at the end of retirement. For as I look at Mary and Joseph in the passage before us this morning, I don't see them as financially blessed. In fact, we know they were probably pretty poor because the sacrifice they offered was two doves or two pigeons. Our doves are two pigeons. And their family is, is really just getting started. And, and we looked in the whole Christmas time that even that was a rocky start. But now recognizing God's blessing and having delivered the babe in Bethlehem and now some eight days later taking him to the temple to be circumcised and then again some 40 days later as Mary had been cleansed of her purification after the delivery of a son, they now find themselves in the presence of Simeon. And now they're finding themselves understanding the blessing that God has given to them. As Simeon blessed them, as Simeon takes the child from them, verse 34, then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. So not only did Simeon bless Mary and Joseph, but I believe Simeon himself was blessed. As he gives those words, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. And so what I want to do this morning is to look at the blessings of God. And I want to lay, before I do that, I want to lay out a couple of foundational principles that I think are going to be seen throughout our entire series on the blessings of God. As we're going to look at the times in the Old Testament and maybe in the New Testament where God says, blessed are. Or blessed is the man. And so we're going to look at those blessings of God as we begin the new year, seeking the blessings of God for the new year as we seek a new year blessing. But this morning, I want to lay just a couple of foundational principles. 
as we look at the blessings of God. The first principle that I want to draw out of this passage that we need to understand is that God determines the blessing, not us. That's right. It's God who determines to bless us. It's God who desires to bless us. It's God who's the one who's able to give the blessings unto those whom he has chosen. There are things that we can do in order for God to bless us. We're going to look at that in just a moment. Mary and Joseph did all the right things. But we need to see that they were blessed also because God had chosen them to give birth to the Messiah. God had chosen them to be blessed. And we have this idea that since God is a fair God, he has to bless everyone the same or it's just not fair. You can't bless them more than you bless me or that's not fair. Or you can't bless me more than you bless them because that's not fair. God, you've got to be fair and you've got to be fair in the blessings that you give to everyone. So there's a sense in which we have this idea that since God is a fair, that since God is a fair God, he has to bless everyone the same or else he's just not fair. But throughout scriptures, we often see that God chooses to bless some and not others. God chose to bless Abraham and all who obey him and follow him. All who honor Israel, God has chosen to bless them. So we must acknowledge that the blessings come from God. He chose Mary and Joseph to give birth to his son. He chose Simeon to give the blessing to Mary and Joseph. It was revealed to him by the Spirit that they would come to the temple. And so he just followed the Spirit to bring God's blessings to Mary and Joseph. And so as we look at the blessings of God, we need to recognize that it's God who determines to give the blessings, not us. It's not always in response to what we do. But having said that, I also want to secondly let us know that we can seek God's blessings through obedience to him. We'll look at this in one of the points in my message this morning. Why do we try and live a life of obedience to him? Why is it so important that we obey the word of God, that we trust him, that we obey him? One reason is because we want to avoid the pitfalls of others. We don't want to be captured by sin and end up suffering. Choose to sin, choose to suffer. And so we make a decision to obey God so that we do not suffer the consequences of our failures and our fallings. We don't want to suffer. And so we seek to obey God. We know that the commands of God are good. He says don't do this because he means don't be hurt by it. The whole reason God says don't is because he doesn't want you to be hurt. We recognize that. But we also know, or at least think, that God blesses those who bless themselves, right? Not exactly. We know that God blesses those who obey him. We'll see that in just a moment with Joseph and Mary. But this is the dilemma of God's sovereignty and our free will. We choose to do that which is right in order to seek after the blessings of God. But God sovereignly gives us the blessings in his own will and in his own timing and in in his own sovereign way. And so we do see that God re-blesses us often in response to our obedience to him. That's why we seek to obey him, to know the blessings of God. But we also see that God is sovereign in the blessings that he gives. Now a third foundation that I want to lay before we even look at the message this morning is that finally we see that God's blessing isn't always easy. We're going to see that in Mary. We see here that Joseph says that the sword will pierce your own soul also. Many of us know the song by Laura Story entitled Blessings. We know that sometimes 
If your blessings come through raindrops, or what if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? God, we know your blessings come in various different ways. And sometimes those blessings aren't always easy. And so we know that God's blessings don't always come easy. Sometimes they come through pain. And so Mary here experiences and is told that he's given the blessings by Simeon, but also there's pain involved. A sword will pierce your own soul too. And so the blessings of God to many in Israel will cause a heartache for Mary. Blessed are you, Mary, among all women, but it will cause your soul to be pierced, your heart to be broken, your sorrow to result in others' joys. Mary, blessings aren't always easy, but they always come from God. And so we do see that oftentimes blessings aren't easy. So having laid this foundation to the blessings of God, we want to see now what it took for Mary and Joseph to know the blessings of Simeon upon their life. So as we look at Mary and Joseph this morning and the blessings that they're going to receive by Simeon, the first point I want to make is that blessings come with obedience or by obedience. It's our obedience that God blesses. It's our obedience that God honors, that God uh, turns around and blesses us for that. Uh, the Old Testament in Deuteronomy, God says, choose for you this day blessings or curses. Choose life or choose death. And so you can choose whether you want to be blessed through obedience or whether you want to Ignore God, disobey him, and suffer the consequences of the curses that God brings. And so we're going to see, as we look at Mary and Joseph, that blessings do come through obedience. Notice what it says about Mary and Joseph. When their day of their purification is done, literally when the time comes, on the eighth day when it was time to circumcise him, they gave him the name Jesus, just as the angel had told them. And when the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Mary and Joseph took him to Jerusalem to present them. And so we see that this was all according to the word of God. Verse 22, according to the law of Moses. Verse 23, it was written in the law of the word. Or excuse me, written in the law of the Lord. And then as well in verse 24, were there again, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. And so, basically, Mary and Joseph are simply obeying what God said. Everything Mary and Joseph did was done in obedience to the law of Moses or to the law of the Lord. They placed themselves in a position of blessing by obeying what the law says. Joseph, why are you doing that? Because the law said so. When are you going to do that? When the law says so. Why are you buying those doves? Because the law says so. Mary and Joseph experienced the blessings of God. Yes, because they were chosen of God, but also because they walked in obedience to God. We choose to walk in obedience to God because we desire God's blessings upon our life. We choose to obey God because we desire our we desire God's blessings upon our lives. And so why do I seek to obey what God says? So that I can experience the blessings of God. I've seen it in my own life. As I come now towards the latter part of my life, I recognize the blessings that God has given to me in the beginning of my life and the calling of God upon my life and the blessings that God has provided to me. Can't you look back? Look back. And remember the blessings that God has given to you because you've walked in obedience with God. It hasn't always been easy, has it? But God's always blessed. And so we know the blessings of God when we walk in obedience to God. And so we can see that our blessings come with obedience. Secondly, we can see that our blessings come with consecration. Now that's a big fancy word. It, it simply means our blessings come 
when we seek holiness from God, when we are set apart unto God. Notice what it says. When the time of their purification came about, Mary and Joseph took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. To take Jesus and present him to the Lord, as was written in the scriptures of the Old Testament of Exodus and in Leviticus, to take the baby, the firstborn child, to the temple and offer him up unto the Lord, consecrating him unto God, setting him apart unto God. They took him to present him to the Lord, to be consecrated to the Lord, to offer a sacrifice unto God. And now we know that Jesus already was the Son of God. We know he was already consecrated to God. He was his Son. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was born of a virgin. There was no sin in him. But Mary and Joseph, out of obedience to the law, did what was required in the law. They consecrated him to God. And they gave the sacrifice required by God. The idea of consecration here is the idea of being set apart unto God. It's taken from the 10th plague of Egypt where God had promised them that if you put the blood over the doorpost, I will pass over you and the firstborn, of your, the firstborn son of your family will die if you don't. But God spared the firstborn of Israel who applied the blood to the doorpost and, and now a sacrifice needed to be offered to redeem the firstborn back again, to, redeem, to remember what God had done as now the firstborn child and the firstborn animal was consecrated, set apart unto God, given to him. And now two doves or two, a dove or two small pigeons indicated that Mary and Joseph were poor and they didn't have a lamb to give, which would be the normal offering. And even though their son would be the lamb of God who was sent to take away the sins of the world, they didn't even have a lamb to offer. And so Mary and Joseph offer the pigeons or the dove to consecrate Jesus setting him apart for the work that God has got for him to do. And so this morning, as I look at that, that the blessings comes from being set apart unto God. We need to recognize that people, God has called us to be his people. God has called us and set us apart unto his own. The church, the ecclesia, are the ones called out by God. Called out of what? Called out of where? Well, yeah, we could say called out of sin, that's true. But called out of this world as a separate people unto God. Separated for him, consecrated unto him. And so people, our lives are to be consecrated unto God. We are not to be living as this world does. We're to be separated, different than this world. We're not to be living in the sin of the world, but we're to be living set apart unto God. Not separated from the world, but set apart from the world. Living in the world, distinct from the world. And so we see the fact that God has consecrated us and set us apart for the work that he's called us to do. And when we are set apart, we're blessed. God blesses us. Parents, we need to teach our kids that they're different. They're not like all the other kids that they want to be a part of. They're different from all of their friends. They're set apart, special unto God, set apart for Him. Not to be a part, as our saying says in our fellowship hall on the blackboard, not to be a part of the in crowd, but rather to be a part of the stable few. And so we see again that blessing comes by being set apart unto God. As they took Jesus and off and circumcised him on the eighth day in accordance with the word of God, and, and then took him later to present after marriage purification, to, to present him to Jerusalem, to present him to the Lord. As it is written, the firstborn male is to be consecrated, set apart unto the Lord 
So we need to live lives of consecration. And parents, the struggle you have is raising your kids as a part of this world or in this world, but set apart from this world. That's a difficult challenge. And all I can say, having raised our six children, is all I can say is the fact that we must trust the Spirit of God. But it begins with setting ourselves, setting our kids apart. We don't want them to be like everybody else. And so as they live within this world, they live it, live it set apart unto God knowing that God has a special idea, a special plan, special purpose, a special calling upon them to live distinct from those around us, to live differently unto God. Set apart as holy unto the Lord. It's a tough calling. It's a tough calling for us as adults. It's even tougher calling for us to raise our children with that idea as well. And there's always a balance that the Spirit of God has to direct you with between being in this world and not of this world. But that's what God's calling us to. And God blesses those who consecrate themselves unto the Lord. Thirdly, Blessings come with waiting. Blessings come in waiting. We look now at verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. For it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. Now we need to recognize who was this man. His name was, he was called, all, all the scripture says is that he was called Simeon. It's most likely he was not a priest or they would have described him as a priest. He was just an ordinary common guy hanging around that God had chosen to provide the blessing unto Mary and Joseph, and as well to be blessed. His name, Simeon, was a common name at that time. And it simply says that he was a man who was from Jerusalem, the holy city, the location of the temple, where Mary and Joseph are coming to Jerusalem from Bethlehem to offer up Jesus and to the sacrifice unto Jesus or to God for Jesus. And so they come into Jerusalem, the, the holy city where Simeon lived, and they come into Jerusalem to present Jesus unto them. But not only was he from Jerusalem, but it says he was righteous and devout. Righteous simply means that he was a man who was right with God. He walked right with God. He simply walked in obedience and, and, and right with God. But the other word that's translated devout is kind of a translation that I would give it conscientious. That he was righteous before God and he was conscientious of his faith. He took his faith seriously for what God was calling him to do and what God had for him to do. We see as well that he was a, a man, the Holy Spirit was upon him. He was being directed by the Spirit of God. Now again, this is pre-death of Christ, when Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would be with you. For here the Holy Spirit simply came upon him, did not live within him, but came upon him. For the Holy Spirit had not yet come at Pentecost. And so they, we see that God had specifically sent the Holy Spirit to Simeon to direct him in what God wanted him to do. It was the Holy Spirit that was on him, and it was the Holy Spirit who had revealed unto him that he would not die until he has seen the Lord's Christ, 
the one who is coming, the consolation of Israel, the promised Messiah who is yet to come. So have you ever had a secret that you were the only one who knew about and you couldn't tell anyone else? God had given Simeon a secret. He was the only one who knew. No one else was aware. The Spirit of God had only told Simeon. He didn't go to one of the priests. He didn't go to one of the Pharisees. He simply revealed it unto Simeon, one of the common men who was devout and righteous and was waiting for the coming. He was just waiting for the right moment, the right time. When the time would be right, when the time had been fulfilled, as the scripture says, he was just waiting for God for the right time of the leading of the Spirit of God. For the Spirit of God had revealed it to Simeon and no one else, and now he was just waiting on God. Do you know how hard it is to wait? To be so excited about what could be happening. Do you remember what it was when your first child was born? And you got the news that we're going to be, we're going to have a baby, we're going to have a child. And that nine months seems to take forever. But now you look back and you realize <laughs> it was just a flash of time. But we wait. You wait upon God. How long would he have to wait? Well, he knew he wouldn't die before it happened. He knew that much. He knew the Messiah was coming, the consolation of Israel. He knew that it would happen before he returned or before that the Spirit would lead him. And verse 27 tells us, Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. It was the Spirit of God who directed him. Now's the time. Now it's time to go. For Mary, it was in Bethlehem where she recognized the fact that the time, the fullness of time had come, according to Galatians. And there was no room for them in the inn, but it was time. And now it was Simeon's time. His waiting was over. The Spirit of God had now moved him to go to the temple courts. But now, which parent? Which child? How do I know? Was Mary and Joseph the only ones with a baby that morning? To be blessed? But it simply says, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and he praised God. He praised God that finally he had had the opportunity that he had been waiting for. Finally, the time had come. For Simeon, this moment he had been waiting for, now he will be blessed as he gives the blessing to the child and it leads to his praising of God. As he praises God. And his praise leads to blessing and his blessings leads to praises. For Simeon had been waiting for this moment. Finally, the final principle I want to say is that blessing comes with fulfillment. When God blesses, you find fulfillment in the blessing that God gives. How many of you understand that? How many of you you've experienced the blessings of God and you knew the peace that passes all understanding that came upon you when God blessed you and you knew that it was the fulfillment of God Simeon takes this child in his arms and praises God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you, Lord, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For Simeon, the calling of God upon his life has been completed. For Simeon, now 
He acknowledged that God, he has, he can dis, his servant can be dismissed. Why? Because my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon's life fulfillment and the blessing that he had received in seeing now Jesus and offering the blessing to Mary gave him the opportunity to say, that's it. It's done. I'm fulfilled. Now you can dismiss your servant in peace. Now I can be dismissed. Now my life is, is done. That's it. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, which you have prepared for all people to see. For it was not just to the Jews. For now it is a light of revelation to the Gentiles and a glory to your people Israel. It was a light for the Gentiles to see and the glory of Israel to be manifested. It was the fulfillment of all of God's plan. All of God's desire. Everything that God had put together had now come to fulfillment. As Simeon gave this blessing unto Mary and Joseph. We don't know how long he lived after this was over. Did he go home on a really high note, put his feet, you know, laid his pillow on his, his head on his pillow, put his feet under the covers, and that was it? It's over? He's done? We don't know. All that we know is that this was the fulfillment of the purpose of God upon Simeon's life. And he had been blessed for it. And he left knowing that blessing was upon him. And what of Anna, the one who for 84 years had been married? They don't know whether it was he was married 84 years or whether she was 84 years when her husband died or what it is there. It's kind of hard. They don't really understand exactly how to uh, do the math on that. But she never left the temple but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. And coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who are looking forward to the redemption. She continued to talk about it. And so we see here the fulfillment of God in the blessings that he gave. Mary and Joseph had said, to the father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And when Mary and Joseph had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon them. When do we ever find fulfillment in what God has called us to do? When do we ever know that our job is done, when we're completed? Oh yeah, we could have a good day when everything goes right and everything just falls into place. And, and at the end of the day, you put your feet and say, wow, that was a great day. God really blessed. But is that the end of it? Is that the blessing of God? When do we really retire from what God's called us to do? When do we really know the fulfillment of the blessings of God upon our lives? When we reach the right age? When we're ready to call it quits? Or do we continue to receive the blessings of God right up until the time in which God says, I'm taking you home. Your job's done. You see, many times throughout our lives, we have received and know the blessings of God. And we know the fulfillment that that gives unto us, but the ultimate fulfillment is in the end when we know that we have completed the work that God has done. We've fought the good fight. We've finished the race. And, and now we simply are waiting for God's blessings to ultimately come in the end. When we hear God say, well done, thou good, and faithful servant. Enter into your father's happiness, your master's happiness. For then we will know the ultimate blessing of God. And then the fulfillment of all that God has promised will be unto us. And we will know the blessing of God. May God add his blessing to this message. Unto you who receive it. And may God, I thank God for blessing me and giving the message to you. May God be the one who blesses all of us 
as we enter now and look forward to entering into this new year, seeking, desiring, wanting the blessing of God upon our lives, no matter what happens in the world around us. May God bless us in this new year. Amen? Amen. Come see you again next week as we will continue our series. Or actually, uh, Ryan will be here next week. Uh, he will be beginning the series uh, looking at Psalm 1, Blessed is the Man. And so he'll be looking at the blessings of Psalm 1. And so Ryan will be with us next week. I'm taking a little bit extended of a Christmas vacation, and I will be heading down to Nashville to spend time with Jason and Ellen as we haven't spent any vacation time with them this Christmas season. So we're looking forward to taking off going to Nashville next week uh, with the longer extended uh, um, uh, New Year's weekend. And so Ryan will be here to bring the message next week, and then I'll be back in two weeks uh, to continue the blessings with you. Amen. Thank you for joining. We'll see you later. Amen.